But uh, what I'm going to do, folks, is uh, I'm just going to get right to it. What we're doing today is we are doing a live stream with uh, two really good friends of mine. They are super talented in the sports world. I'm talking straight up OGs in uh, sports media. Paul Charchian from uh, – the guy is a fantasy guru. He is the – he's a – He's a legend, actually, in, in the world of fantasy. He's the people that the, the Adam Schefters of the world wish they could be. And then you've got uh, Steve Zabin. I've been listening to Steve Zabin for friggin' 20 years now. He's my absolute favorite commentary uh, host in all of radio. And so I'm just going to bring them in right now, Steve Zabin and Paul Charchin. How are you boys doing tonight? So that is awesome. So we've got we've got people uh, from all over the world wanting to, um, you know, taste uh, bourbon along with us. And, you know, with all the technical difficulties, I forgot to get my glasses, you know, so I don't have a I don't have a glass to drink along with you. So how do, how do you like that for uh, for being prepared? Am I right? Shall I get along and get a glass or what? Well, I think what's going to happen here is that um, I'm going to sneak off and let you guys just kind of run my show for a minute while I, <laughs> while I get some glasses. Yes, go run away. Charge and I will take over. Charge, <laughs> do you know any good jokes? Yeah, any right. good jokes? <laughs> this and is our big chance. Our, our big, big chance, chance here. here. That's right. So, All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. by the way, while we're, while we're filibustering, go ahead, Fred. Go get your glasses. Go to go get the glasses. So this is... This is the Mitch. Is it Mitchers charge or is it Mictors? Mictors. Mictors. Mictors that uh, was the bottle which Fred used to enter our whiskey league guillotine league last year. And um, it's good. It's expensive. It was like one hundred and fifty bucks. Don't tell Fred because he's away. I couldn't tell that. Oh, he's back. I couldn't <laughs> tell the difference between this and the other stuff. But I was very proud to get it. Came in a nice box. That is nice. I I had to send you Redbreast because you were the winner, and Redbreast was my uh, was my answer into the Guillotine League. So you got some Redbreast twelve for me, and that also it wasn't a hundred bucks, but it was probably seventy dollars plus. I had to ship it to you, so maybe by the time it got there, it was a hundred bucks. Uh, that's no, a that's a real breast, loss. Right Redbreast is really good. Really it good. It's one of my favorites. So, boys, uh, I, I wanted to you – know, you guys have both had me on your shows before, and I wanted to kind of repay the favor a little bit um, yeah. and bring you a little bit into the whiskey world. And these folks here who are watching tonight from all over the world, um, really, they – I'll have a musician on, and they're like, that's nice. Uh, get to the whiskey. You know, so uh, <laughs> everyone's everyone loves what you do. If anyone could like trade jobs with with you, I'm sure they would. But let's talk about your whiskey background. How did you get into uh, to become a fan, as Zabe would say, a fan of the brown? Charge. I'll go first. Um, I was not a whiskey drinker until I was in my 40s, and. I started going on this uh, gaming weekend in the middle of nowhere, Minnesota, in the dead of winter into a cabin with 10 buddies. And the first year that we went, a few people brought whiskey. I had never had it before. And you want a perfect drink for the middle of winter in Minnesota. Well, it's whiskey. And so tried it, liked it. And then the next week and the next year, we concocted a blind bidding whiskey weekend where uh, blind tasting, where everybody brings a different bottle. And we've done it now for 10 years. Everybody brings a different bottle that's never come before. And we do a blind taste off, double elimination, Fred. So if, you, if, a, if, a, if one bottle gets knocked out early, it has a chance to come back in later and, uh, and come back in and get the win. And it's turned out to be a ton of fun. And we've, uh, we've had uh, a lot of fun with that. And it's just exposed me to all these different whiskeys, all these different styles. I don't well, and you have that, you know, you have this uh, uh, whiskey weekend, you know, that caught my eye 
and uh, tell everyone about that. For for those who are just now tuning in, Paul Charchian here. He's a longtime uh, radio host in Minnesota and has uh, has his own fantasy league called the Guillotine Leagues. He's just an incredible expert in the world of fantasy football. But more than anything, he's a cool dude. And he loves him some uh-huh. whiskey, and he's got he's got one of the coolest uh, blind taste offs that I've ever heard of. So tell us about that. Well, I mean, it did it started as a gaming thing where we all go up and we play video games, board games, poker, pool. Uh, there's a foosball table, and we spend four days with doing dude stuff, guy stuff. Well, not a, it's not as sexual as I'm making it sound. It's in <laughs> fact it's shockingly not sexual. But um, and then really we've continued to do all that fun stuff. But then you overlay into it beginning at noon every day, top of the hour, we're doing a blind taste test between two whiskeys and we don't know what they are. So these are just, they're not, you don't know the label, you don't know the bottle, you don't know the name, you don't have anything to go on, but how it tastes, how it smells, what what is it, the, the nose, the taste, the, no, the nose, the palate, the, I don't, you know, whatever the three things are, Fred. Um, you just go on that, and we we end up voting uh, for our favorites. And now we've done it uh, 10, 11 years, and and it's a, it's my favorite weekend out of the season. Well, that's great. So, um, what won last? I guess it would be is it this year or last year that the you had the big upset? Uh, well, we we had um, we had a pretty sizable uh, upset a couple of years ago when McKenna won. And McKenna was a was a surprise. Most of us didn't know it. And at the time, nobody knew it, Fred. You know, this is McKenna when when McKenna what the McKenna bottle and bond was still a twenty four dollar bottle. And um, this is before you and other experts lauded it as one of the best in the world. And that McKenna uh, that McKenna upset was was tremendously fun. And, you know, over the course of the years, we somebody usually brings an expensive bottle or a couple expensive bottles. But more often than not, it tends to, for us at our group anyway, it tends to be these, you know, these reasonably priced bottles of, of, of bourbon that tend up being the most appealing. Mm, that's fantastic. Zabe, did, how did you get your start in, uh, in bourbon? Was it back in the, uh, the mean streets of, uh, uh-huh. I, how do you yeah, always say yeah. that? <laughs> the mean streets of McLean, Virginia. Yeah. yeah. Ray, yeah. Born, raised the mean streets. Um, I don't even know where or when I started drinking bourbon, I think I probably gravitated or graduated off of, and don't judge, the old captain and diet. So at Uh least the spiced rum was already at least brown and whatever. And I think I started drinking bourbon and or scotch, and I realized, hey, here's a drink that will accelerate me to where I wanna be without (laughs) all the suds and all the belly churning of beer. It'll get me there quicker, and it's got a lot to it. You know, all these different notes and flavors and ways uh, to make bourbon and whiskey and scotch and all the differences therein. And I do love the bottles, Fred. The bottles and the name and the marketing. I'm like a fish. You know, hook me in, you know? <laughs> so that's how it is. And it's just now become my drink of choice. And otherwise, what am I going to do? Be a vodka drinker? We don't Please. Want that. We don't we don't need or want that, my friend. So uh, you you have me on the show a couple couple three years ago, and then you just keep asking me to come back on and come back on. And every one of your affiliates that you get associated with in your podcast, and I just want to say thanks for that, man. You've always been you've always been very kind to me throughout my career. And uh, uh, Paul, I'd say the same for you, but every time I take your fantasy advice, I end up losing. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, charge loss too this buddy. year. <laughs> yeah, of course I mean, he said it's on auto draft without Wi-Fi when our draft went down. That's Charge's excuse. That uh, is, I was on the air, which is he, a pretty verifiable excuse, by the way. Charge, yeah. you're the first to go out in our whiskey league. Is that right? Yes, yes. I blame auto draft, but shame. ultimately yeah, it's on me. Shame. I, and yeah. I was, I was the second to go out, or second or third, but uh, man. I just think, you know, I, I'd say it's fixed with, with Zabe winning it, but at the end of the it day. It felt fixed, didn't it? Zabe, yeah, but Zabe doesn't have the talent for that. <laughs> no, no, no. Feels fixed, but it was real, real championship. A little bit lucky, but real championship. So how did you all get into, uh, you know, sports media? Because that's one of those kind of dream jobs for everybody. 
I mean, I did it in college. Awful, terrible college sports radio. I called every sport they would let us at UC Santa Barbara, the Harvard of the West, ding. Um, they had a student radio station and they had a small sports department, so to speak, which is really just a transmitter, a couple of headsets. And literally, it was like you would put the antenna for your broadcast set up and point it at the tower on campus where the radio station was underneath Stork Tower in the middle of UC Santa Barbara. And we'd call everything. Charge, we'd call water polo games. Why? Wow. Because they let because why not? You, can you imagine a worse product than college <laughs> broadcasted water polo? And uh, 12 is swimming with it, and he throws it, and I think 30 has it. Wait, oh, no, wait a minute. Wait, it's going the other way. Oh, they're splashing. They're splashing, and there's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, so I don't even how do you even know what the rules of these games are right you, you got to go I, do water I, what i don't even know what the rules are for that game we, we we did every sport we could including the ones that you really like to do basketball was mainly the one we didn't have a football school there so i started doing that i was writing for the student newspaper in the sports department uh back in the day and uh i was able to cobble together a career i've been on the run from a real job my whole life it's like a fugitive from well, responsibility. Uh, Charge with your backstory. We got some questions coming in for you, Zabe. And we'll get to Charge. I feel like there's, I feel like jail's involved somehow with Charge's backstory. But Lumpy, <laughs> Lumpy Swines comes in for you, Zabe, wanting to know outside of bourbon, what would you be on the air? Uh, what would you have on the air after uh, a two, three hour radio show? Oh, yeah. What would I drink on the air? That's a good mm. question. Yeah, I think he meant to say after two radio shows, why are you still doing this right now? And I said, well, I'd be drinking anyway. So it's just, <laughs> just filming me drink right now. So, yeah, I, I am responding via the uh, I've logged into Periscope, so I will be able to respond to comments. Welcome. Will Bram one is in the house. Oh, Will Bram. Charge, one, such a good fella. Such a good fella. Charge, what did you start doing when you got into the real world? Well, by the way, I can trump you on your your radio, uh, your college radio story. I'm sure you you do not know this. I went to a small liberal arts school in Minnesota called St. Olaf, which is oh, yeah. the most Minnesota sounding school ever. I Saint believe Olaf. they're in my small school ass whoopings of the week in football season. <laughs> Isn't that where the, the, the like, Golden Girls went? Yes. Yeah, she it, Yes. She claimed to have lived in the city of St. Olaf. So uh, and that was on the air while I was while I was going there. And get this, our radio station only worked through the electrical system on campus. It was not even broadcast over the air. So you had to plug into an outlet? That's right. You had to be plugged into an outlet (laughs) to get the station. And that meant there were so few listeners, Abe, that we would have giveaways like, you know, free pizza. These are college students, right? So they should be, they should love giveaways. Free pizza to the third caller. Nobody call. (laughs) <laughs> that, that was that was the bad old days right there. Um, yeah, I managed to get into radio through uh, through my magazine, Fantasy Football Weekly, back in uh, back in the mid '90s, and we um, we started sending our magazine to the hosts on the radio station who we knew played. Those people had me on as guests, and then eventually they decided they wanted a fantasy show on the radio, and so they they were nice enough to offer it to me. It's amazing. You've been you've been with fantasy, uh, and I was just tease him you know that i lost because of you because honestly you've always actually been very helpful for me in my other leagues but it's amazing you've been you've been at, at the center of the fantasy trend forever you know what's it been like to see it go from like uh you know just a few people hanging out in a in a hotel room or dorm room or vegas to a friggin multi-billion dollar industry it is now well when i started in the industry People didn't even know what fantasy football was. You go, you know, people say, what do you, you know, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm in the fantasy football industry. And they thought it was Dungeons and Dragons. Like I was walking around with a 20 sided die in my pocket. And so it, it, you know, back then people thought it was, this was the nerdiest thing they had ever heard of in their entire life. And no normal person would ever play fantasy football. And as it's turned out, 50 million people play in America alone. And if you're under 50 years old, one in three men under 50 play fantasy football. So it's you know it's it's obviously swept the nation. But back then, it's it was just all these people who thought we were losers. Well, a couple <laughs> things. 
Charge does walk around with a 20-sided die in his pants anyway. <laughs> so it matter. Secondly, the way it works, Charge, and you know this, it started with nobody knew what fantasy football was. And then there was a period where the so-called, you know, big broadcasts would mock it. Yeah. Oh, what are you playing, fantasy? And they would yeah. roll their eyes. They wouldn't touch it. ESPN right. wouldn't touch it. And then some dummy up there in management's like, uh, hey, you know, this might be information our listeners want, and we might be able to make some money on it. But there yeah. was that period, remember, Charge, oh, where yeah. the big boys mocked people that played fantasy. Oh, for sure. Meanwhile, inside of Bristol, Connecticut, everybody's playing, right? They're all playing the whole – everybody in there is playing. But on air, you had all these stuffy old guys that would mock and ridicule fantasy fantasy players, you know – well, you know, you can't make that trade. This isn't fantasy football. You know, all this stuff. And now, man, they got their come up. And so now it's now you look at ESPN.com. The most visited page on ESPN.com is their homepage. Their second most visited page is the fantasy football homepage. Wow. Yeah. Not no the shots. NFL page, not the baseball page, their fantasy page. So, yeah, it's it's all turned around and the big boys are in on it now. Finally, we're happy to have them. Well, I think we've got the best fantasy league going, and that's Whiskey League. And William wants to know if there's going to be a, a year two. Have we started organizing Whiskey League year two? Haven't started organizing it yet, but it's going to happen. It is. The challenge for me is figuring out who's going to be in because we only have 17 people. And, you know, Everyone that was in last year wants to be in again. And I've got a bunch of people like, I got to get in. I got to get in. I got to get in. So we'll see. I may go back to my little list of who took the longest to get me their bottle after I won. <laughs> and maybe I'll get to you in the bottom five charge and say, well, you're a little slow in your payment. Well, I'll tell you that that was a hard bottle to let go for me. But I got it specifically for Whiskey League. I filled it up at Michter's. It was one of the... Uh, one of the private bottles from Michter's when they were having uh, a special opening. And uh, I was like, you know, this is going to be my Whiskey League bottle. And so. Can you tell me how much this cost? Um, that's probably a $65, $75 bottle. Okay. But the, and which is not that expensive, right? What's an expensive bottle go for? You know, when we get past 80 bucks, I think that's when you start looking at what is expensive. You know, generally, American whiskey is going to be under 50. But, you know, I'll be honest with you. That that bottle was actually a gift from the distillery. I didn't pay for it. No. So. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, I'm, look, I'm not getting after it from that angle. I just want to know the high end. Like, is there a bottle of whiskey that's $100 right now? Oh, oh there's yeah. tons of them. There's, there's, there are whiskeys that are thousands of dollars. You know? Okay, well, that's see, that's my point. So, yeah. what is what is considered expensive whiskey? Hundred dollars and up? Yeah, yeah. In, okay. in American whiskey and Scotch, that's okay. that's that's like nothing. Well, the Michter's, it's got the special uh, barrel number noted right there. Not sure if you can see that or not under my finger. And uh, yeah, I cherish it as uh, one of the nicer bottles all right so joshua perkins notes that the secondary market on that particular bottle is more than uh two hundred dollars so oh, oh wait wow. a minute holy cow okay. including a, a quarter drank already because i'll sell it <laughs> well I, I think knowing that you drank it it's gonna like be 400 so <laughs> it's gonna go up you yeah. know yeah the backwash has got a lot of value to it see now this brings up another topic fred i feel like if i want to get E.H. Taylor or Eagle Rare um, or any variety of whiskeys now, I got to know a guy. I can't, yeah. I, I'm, there all these brands never hit the shelf anymore. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't have some in with a proprietor who's willing to harvest this stuff before it ever hits the shelf and hold it aside for you, you're never going to get, you're, I'm never going to get Blanton's. I it just, this stuff I never ever see on the shelves anymore. Yeah. I think this is a real prop, potential problem for the whiskey industry that you, you can't buy a lot of this stuff. Well, it's funny. It's like every one of those brands that you mentioned is from one distillery, uh, and that's Buffalo Trace. And so yeah. they have a, a kind of an al allocation mechanism you know, that's in play that frustrates a lot of people. 
but it's their model and um you know it's it, it's tough and i i think i think that you know buffalo trace does a really good job of putting out really really great whiskey i don't think they do the best job of like you know managing the distribution of their products uh whereas other brands like you know bookers bookers is a really good really good north of uh fifty dollars bourbon you know that yeah. you can find in uh, a lot of markets. Yeah, I've got it. I've you got know? a bottle right now. And if they wanted to, if they wanted to play the allocation game on that, you know, they probably could. Uh, but uh, they, they, they tend to be a little bit more, you know, narrow with where they where they put that and what stores they work with, uh, and how that how that runs out. But it's like it it is a. It's a matter of demand, like these great bourbons. The the demand on them is really high. You brought up Henry McKenna earlier. That's probably yeah. the best example of a product of, um, you know, that nobody really paid attention to, and then it won a couple of awards. I mean, I always get blamed for, <laughs> yeah, right. for the McKenna thing, <laughs> but I, I was just one judge. I mean, I wrote about <laughs> it, but I was just one judge. <laughs> Isn't there a good Costco whiskey out now? Did I hear that right? Yeah, Costco has a very good product out. It's a, one of the Kirkland brands one. I mean, all of these uh, all of these big uh, liquor stores like Total Wine. Little, I mean, Paul, Total Wine's Wolcott won your yes, blind tasting, you know, which led me yeah. to write about it for Forbes. And, you know, you're, you're, there's a lot of these good, you know, you know, private label liquor store brands that are tasty for sure. Yeah. This Walcott is the, it's the total wine house brand. It costs about 22, 23 bucks. And it's great. It, it, it's, it's a very, very good bourbon. And, and, and for just by taste, it's, it's worth a lot more than that. And the funny thing is it ends up winning my whiskey weekend last year. And it was, it was because a guy on his way up to Whiskey Weekend went to Total Wine, grabbed <laughs> grabbed the bottle he intended to bring, and then the employee nagged him into bringing Walcott. So we brought that bottle as well. We added it into the mix, and his eighty dollar bottle of whiskey got knocked out. But Walcott at twenty three bucks ended up sailing all the way into the and into the championship, and it ended up winning. Cinderella story. Kind I mean, Walcott, it really is. Loyola. That really Loyola. is like. That's one of the most fascinating blind tasting stories ever. It really is. So, you know. So, wait. So, the Kirkland brand is called Kirkland Whiskey? Yeah, they just have a Kirkland bourbon. Uh, it, used to yeah. have a, it used to have a six-year-old age statement on it, and it was Beam, and it was better than Beam. You know, so they— Who's, Really? Yeah. yeah. Whose juice is Kirkland getting, as you like to say? Where are they getting so, their juice from? So they their contract with Beam, from my knowledge, uh, exhausted, and now the the thought is is that it is from uh, Barton, uh, the Barton Distillery, okay. in uh, in Bardstown. But I actually but they do, won't I don't say. know for certain on they it. They won't say. Okay. Oh, oh no, I Costco think, will think... Costco will never say where their sources are. They'll never tell. Yeah, right. and it's and it's like uh, it's really shrouded up in uh, in NDAs uh, through the respective partners. Costco has what a, does, so what Costco does has like an enormous think? target on them from a, right. from a liability perspective, and they actually huh. it's, they used to these wine tastings, and a guy got drunk and like uh, got a DUI and like caused some uh, property damage. And he basically, they basically stopped doing wine tastings for this guy because he sued him and won or they settled or something, but they changed all their policies. And I used to write for Costco's, like their liquor section. And so oh. I'm, a, I'm a little bitter about that because it kind of basically ended my sweet gig with Costco for a minute. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so they're, what, they're very careful. What does the stuff. rest of the industry, Fred, what does the rest of the bourbon industry, the other distilleries think? of Costco and are they looking down their nose at any distillery that makes a dirty dirty backdoor deal mm -hmm. with Costco to sell them their juice no they're like how do we get in on that deal you know yeah oh, I bet <laughs> I bet they don't like, make that deal like oh oh so you just you just made a deal with with Beam well listen Beam doesn't have the same kind of tequila we do why don't we make a, a Kirkland tequila 
You know, I mean, so because Costco is they're, the, they're the number one retailer in the country, and um, okay, they're buying power. And you can't sleuth out. You can't sleuth out what distillery it is by taste. The, those of you that are really good can't go. Well, oh, you're 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 just that assuming is. that I've tasted their Kirkland bourbon in the last six months. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. That I'm one, just saying I, that would I have not else. In other words, is there not a taste footprint that would give up the true identity? If it is Barton, if it is indeed Barton, there would be a a, a pretty prominent um, banana note. Uh, mm. there's so there's a couple rumors out there about Costco is that they're actually taking distillate from two distilleries and and creating kind of like their own blend. Um, oh. but uh, and that's that's the kind of going trend that's happening right now, but I but I don't know for certain. Mm. But I have I haven't tasted their stuff. This questioning though, I'm thinking that I'm gonna have to go to Costco tomorrow and and kind of give it the old uh, palate treatment and see what it is. I think you should. There you go. Well, boys. Uh, are we, ready? Ahead, are we ready to do some tasting? I'm, I'm, You're ready. I'm anxious. I've been looking at these bottles for five days, Fred. That's great. Yeah. So the, the first thing you need to know is that two of these in here are on my whiskey of the year contender status. Like, so these are, I do these tastings throughout the year. And every year I pick 30 bourbons or so to do a taste off, a blind taste off, and pick my pick my favorite. So you all are going to – two of them are in the mix. One of them is about to be probably in the mix. All right. And another one is, I believe, the most over, overhyped uh, bourbon in all the land. So. Wow. Yep. All right. So you, we got Ooh. we got some work to do here. Now, Kit, let's okay. just go ahead and hold up our bottles to show the audience, make sure we have the right uh, the right bottles. Yep, that's my handwriting. Yep. <laughs> Charge is approved. Zabe, can you say something when you do it? Because um, you are you go dark when you're not talking. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, lights up. There, there do, we I, go. do I need to adjust my settings here? So no, you look, I think good. you look terrific. No, right. no, no. I mean, in terms of do I go dark my camera when I don't talk? Well, I, it's happening to charge too sometimes. I, I think it's just yeah. the third party software that allows me to have these graphics and stuff. So it, it's a. All right, I got A, B, C, D. I'm ready. All right. Now, my mouth, I've not, I've not done anything to my mouth. Is there, you know, when you go into these things, <laughs> you can't, you know, if I had just chugged a bunch of orange juice, right, the whole thing's wrecked. So I have not I have not done any oral preparation for this whatsoever, Fred. Oral preparation. <laughs> well, Charge, I will say I've been waiting for the moment for you to get my lessons on oral preparation for your palate. Um, the going into the um, going into a tasting, you know, if you're being serious about it, you really do need to you need to you need to know what flares your palate up. You, you know, so like everybody's different. Like some people can eat Indian food and, and taste Indian mm -hmm. food, like helps my palate. Like I, the, the spices there just kind of like really huh. open it up and everything. Um, but like a real, so you go with what you do normally. So if you smoke and you drink a lot of coffee, just don't change anything. Don't, don't do something that's going to be, you know, far outside your lane. Like for me, two days ago, like I was telling you all on the radio today, drinking Benchmark, you know, damn near killed my palate. So um, <laughs> I still got a little sore in the back from that damn thing. But, uh, <laughs> but so I think you're okay. Soda water. If you like soda water, just swish your mouth around a little bit. That'll clean it up real good. But uh, good. so let's uh, let's get to glass A. All right. Now I'm going to tell you, boys that it is heavy and proof so go in go in gently okay now i'm i'm putting it into my uh into my glass because i've got one of these fancy glasses what's charge's glass called oh he's got he's got my favorite glass the glen karen now explain how this glass makes this 
taste or smell or in any way different from Zabe's regular glass? So it's not that it would necessarily make it taste or smell uh, differently. What it actually does is it allows you to assess the whiskey and its flaws and its strengths. You know, other glasses, you know, so the glass he has, which is a rocks glass, you know, you're gonna, when you go to smell it, you're going to be losing a lot of aromatic properties because there's so much air between your nose and the mm. whiskey. And ah, there's nothing okay. to like, there's nothing to like funnel it up. This glass, it like, it kind of like, I mean, you get your nose in there, man, you smell it, you know, and it's also. Well, I smell this, this particular one has got a punch to it. Yep. We're talking, Ooh. this is 113.4 proof. All right. It's, it's, typical, it's What's a typical that, proof for bourbon? For uh, 90? The, the lowest it can go is 80 proof, but 80. the typical proof yeah. is between 90 and 107. Okay. Highest There's a proof lot of is, good flavor. The higher you go, Zabe, the higher you highest go. Highest proof. Mm -mm -mm. What the highest, go highest I've got is my Booker's is, I think, 129. Right, uh, yeah. right Fred? Isn't Booker's 129? Yeah, I mean, it ranges. Uh, but, okay. you know, 129, 129 is uh, solid. So I'm actually not drinking this one along with you. Okay. I, so now, what are you guys picking up on the nose? It It's certainly proofy, like Zabe said. It's strong. Am I, I supposed can, to drink it yet? Yeah. Okay. okay. Drink, drink away. Now, I'm not drinking it quite yet because I just want to go through the smelling part. Okay. And remember, you want to go back and forth with your nose like that? Uh, oh, really? Why is that? Well, because one of your nostrils may be clogged. One nostril smells better than another, you know, So, and they both smell something different. So you, like you might get spice on one side of your nostril and then wood on the other. And so if you, by doing it like that, you can kind of like, uh, you know, focus, you know, laser in on, on what those notes might mm -hmm. be. To me, despite being very proofy, I'm getting a ton of sweet smell from this. I think it smells fruity. I would put apricot or banana into the smell. Okay. But that's just me. I think I, it, I'm expecting something a little bit sweet right now. We'll see. We'll see if it comes to bear. If it, we'll see if it bears fruit. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. All right, Zabe. How about yourself? I like it. Like I said, it's got a lot of heat to it, but it's not harsh. Um, it's like a less sweet. More interesting fireball to my oh taste. Oh my god, that's like the worst compliment you could ever pay a whiskey. <laughs> Where was Sorry. the second comfort comparison? What um, am I supposed to say? I mean, it's it's whiskey. <laughs> it's 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 got some kick to it. What can I smell? I don't know. The, I don't know. So good. For those watching, there is there is plenty of kick here. This is at least 120 proof, I believe, Fred. Um, and in my mouth, I didn't get the burn, but down the esophagus, that's where I got I got some burn and some heat. Now I like that, and I I have grown to a like proofier whiskeys, so I I liked the burn. But there was also, I thought, a pretty exotic flavor palette here. Way oakier than I expected mm. when, from the smell, I didn't get really an oaky sense to it, but I definitely got it in the mouth. Um, and it, it, to me, it still was a little bit a little bit uh, fruity. And I'm going to stick with my banana comparison. Maybe, it's, maybe that's crazy. I didn't get like a chocolatey sweet, but I got, I got, a, I got sweet notes out of it. Okay. I dig. I would grade now. Can I give it a grade? What's the grading system? Hold on, we need we need to like the the, the chat's kind of lighting up a little bit on 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 Zabe's fireball comments. Uh, Doug, <laughs> yeah, blasphemy uh, comments. Yeah, Doug Pendleton said that uh, you just kicked your fans in the balls. So <laughs> <laughs> I think this whiskey at 120 proof kicked him in the balls that's what i think happened right here <laughs> but then washington just... uh football team comes back and says listen it's high-end fireball now, how about that the washington <laughs> football team's following us i mean they they probably need to drink more than anybody right now yeah they do oh yeah holy cow mm -hmm. 
Um, I know Dan Snyder drinks bourbon. I do know that. Of course. I'm going to finish this off. I like it. But I feel like we need to, before we go on to the next one, we need to get, we need to establish some kind of a grade for this. Less, yeah, let's start grading. Because I'm worried if I go back, you know, th- three uh, bourbons later, I'm going to come back and go, oh, yeah, what was it? What did I think about A? Okay. All right. I dig. So How about a one, a one through 10 or a letter one, grade, one through, something one like through that? Ten, one through 10 is good. Um, also, you know, on a hunt, when you get, Here's the thing. What you're going to find is like you could be you could be like a um, you could Mm. give like both of them an eight. And you're like, well, there's a lot of separate separation between eight and nine. You know, so is it eight point one, eight point two? I think a a scale to 100 is is safer in terms of determining a winner. Let's do it. Okay, so. Now, I'm not going to be grading these. I'm going to be coaching you all on grading them to hopefully help you get your pick you know, of what you, of what you want. I want Which Zabe one? to go first so that because I'm worried I'm going to influence him. Zabe's very easily influenced. He follows the pack a lot. Mm. And if I tell him what my grade is, he'll just like pick that grade and go ah, one up. Try to, like, you one, you know. Yeah. All right. I give it. Let me just sniff it one more time. So let's, let's, so let's go here. An F is flunking. You're not going to taste it. A D is like you're like. Wait, I thought a, we were one through one hundred. Wait, are yeah, we letter grade or one through one hundred? Oh, well, oh, well, I'm just thinking. Okay, so well, all right, so. Well, a D I is, is a D, 60 an to F 70. would be like under sixty. So it's okay. like so under right. sixty is an F. A D is in the sixties. Uh, uh, a C is in the seventies. Uh, I'll a, give it a, B is a in the solid. 80s. Solid 84. Solid B. Okay. Boy, that's a lot higher than I expected based on your reaction really? and your comparison to Fireball. Maybe he likes Fireball, you know? 42. It's um, fiery. This thing's fiery. Fred, I like this a lot. I like it proofy. I like the warmth. I can still feel it through my chest right now. I thought it had plenty of flavor. And a lot of times these proofier ones, all I taste is gas. I thought this was I thought this was very good. I'm gonna give it a 92. This I thought this was a very Ooh. good high proof bourbon right here. Look at that. Coming in strong so, on A. Charge in yeah. Zabe is like, you know what? We'll date, but we're not going to the prom. <laughs> but you'll do in a pinch on, on a lonely evening. <laughs> now I've got just a very bland cracker that I am using as my palate cleanser um, because I, I I don't I assume I don't want to inject a lot of flavor although you said I could have is, Indian food between is these, that what but. is that what you do on whiskey weekend you bring a bunch of crackers charge we do we bring uh, crackers almonds and pretzels and pretzels have got are saltier typically but right. yeah that's what we that's what we do because we're doing a and B right after each other you got to have something yeah. in between there now. Here at home, I'm trying to convince my wife that the appropriate palate cleanser between these is oral sex. But <laughs> to this point, it's it really yeah. I have I need Fred. I need that. No, to come don't bring Fred me in on that conversation. Because <laughs> Fred's an authority on this. If I can say Fred Minnick has vouched for this, and then I think we're in. Well, you know, doctors will write you scripts for for sex and stuff, so. You know, oh, I mean, you, you know, good that, luck getting the local authority to honor it. <laughs> That's a whole different story. That's right. You can get the warrant all day long. Who's going <laughs> to serve it? Oh, boy. So, all right. Should we move on to B? Yes. Yeah. I'm pouring B in. So glass B. Right now. I'll actually taste along with you on B. All right, good. Don't don't show don't don't show us the bottle or anything. I now this has got a more caramel color, right? So the last one was was not as deep and rich in color. Now I have enough experience to know that doesn't necessarily mean that it's aged any longer. Um, but in my head, I always feel like the darker colored stuff to me seems richer and fuller. And mentally. I tend to I tend to give more of the benefit of the doubt to this, this the darker colored bourbons. 
I mean, these you're are all something there. I mean, yeah, these are all, okay. um, well, there, there's some barrel finishes in here. And okay. there's one that is not a bourbon. All right, okay. once again, for the idiots out there, difference between whiskey and bourbon. So a basically, bourbon is a whiskey. Whiskey is a categorical term that basically just means distilled grain aged in wood. And Scotch is a whiskey, Irish whiskey is a whiskey, Canadian whiskey is a whiskey. But bourbon means it has to be at least 51% corn, made in the United States, a bunch of like distillation techniques and proofing and all that. But it has to go into a new charred oak barrel. And a new charred oak barrel is really what separates it from uh, the rest of the world's whiskeys like Scotch, which is going into used barrels. So that is what bourbon is. And you'll see things in the label says bourbon finished in... Uh, port wine cast. Like, let me find. Yeah, like uh, Angel, like Angel's Envy is yeah, uh, is exactly. finished in, uh, mm-hmm. I think, cognac or casks or something. Uh, yes. Port K. Yeah. I, I just port, tasted this. Who forgot to bring the flavor? This is like the most <laughs> flavorless whiskey I've ever tasted. I'm like, am I missing something? No. No, maybe it's just because it's on the heels of A, and A was was so distinctive and powerful. This thing has no flavor, but it's got an after kick. It's got a little burn as it goes down. But I'm not tasting hardly any flavor on the front end. All right. So you are you guys watching this on YouTube or Periscope or anything right now? I'm on Periscope, but the comments are coming and going. But I because what I'd like I to do on, is uh, I would like I would like to show the audience what we're tasting right now but after after you made oh, that okay. comment. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, I'll look away. Can you give me scouts right. honors, Abe, that you're not going to look? I'll look away. There we go. Okay. Um, Safe? Okay. Not, it's I not up yet. Back. Charge, what do you think of this one? What do you think of a B? Um, like you. I'm. Uh, I find this to not have nearly as much flavor. It's not. It's not very sweet at all. I find it very oaky, um, which is not my. Not in my personal flavor profile. This would be. This would be a. This would be a whiskey that would sit on my shelf for a long, long time. That I would try to pawn off on guests, perhaps, or people <laughs> that I want to exit my house quickly. And um, now, I just, just want to remind the audience that you saw that they're tasting a blind lives who do not comment. Uh, what they were tasting. So I it, can't see the comments for whatever it's worth. Maybe Zabe can. I'm not seeing any oh, comments. Zabe's totally I can't see cheating. The okay. I'm not um, cheating. I I wonder if this is not a double a double oaked of some kind. It tastes very woody to me. Um, maybe a little licorice, but I I don't like it. I'm not finishing it. B. I'm going right to the grading, Zabe. I'm giving right. B. I'm giving B a sixty-eight. I ran out of a cracker at chocolate bar, and my sister stole it from me. <laughs> okay. Is there any money? To- uh, that's great. Live parenting, right here. Uh oh. I, I, I heard. It. I heard someone stole a chocolate bar or something. Yeah, there was a. I, there may have been a chocolate bar involved, and that's you know that's going to happen, Fred. Um, now, um, I feel, here's the thing. When I give this a 68, whatever this is, B, I'm nervous, Fred, that it's going to turn out to be some beloved, some beloved bottle that I'm hammering and, but you know what? It just, it is what it is. And I, I thought A was just so much more sophisticated and so much more flavor. I just, I just, I don't see a lot to like in the, uh, in the flavor profile of this one. Well, I mean, you like what you like, and you don't like what you don't like, you know. And I think it's, um, I think that's important. You got, you can't, you can't sway from uh, who you are and what you like, and you got, you, you got to be, you know, just like you would say, like, uh, it's time to bench a quarterback. It's time to bench a bourbon. And, are uh, you, are you going to tell us what bourbons what as we go along here, or no? Well, after, what I would like right? to do is I would like after? to do the reveal after you've tasted everything, um, yeah. and and you know, and I'd like you to because I want to I want you to we want to pick like what your favorite is, and then then I'll reveal it. Now the audience only knows right, what we had just tasted, 
only because yeah. you had said, and I quote, "Who forgot to bring the flavor?" And I just, yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to put that out there. So, uh, see, I I thought there was flavor, and I don't like it. So for me, it was even worse than being flavorless. I didn't care for the flavor of mm. B. All right, Zabe, you have not given a numeric grade for B. I think you should do that before we move so on to 68, C. 68, 68 D plus. All right. Barely hanging in there. So a pair That's of 68s. the same number I gave it. Yeah, pair of 68s. Okay. You know, that'd be a good golf score. <laughs> yeah, sure would. <laughs> Never done Especially that. Liquored up on bourbon. Mm-hmm. What's your best? Uh, what's your best golf score? Seventy-three. There's seventy-three. Seven birdies. Yeah, but that means I made a lot of stupid doubles. Seven birdies. You should have shot sixty something. Anyway, that's <laughs> one, enough. Nobody wants to hear about one hundred. What about your? What about your best golf score, Freddie? Well, uh, this would be back in college. Um, you know, when I was lean and uh, I could run a six-minute mile and just looking good and no gray hair. Mm. Um, I shot a 79. I shot a 79 wow, nice. once, yeah. Where'd you go to college? Oklahoma State. Yeah. It was the Payne County take, Golf Course. Take it. Cowboy take up. Cowboy, yeah, we, have a, we had a good golf Boone, team. Like, Boone Pickens, two most famous Oklahoma State alums. Garth Brooks, T. Boone. Uh, uh, Brian Big Country Reeves. Brian Big Country. That's all I can think of. Barry Sanders. Uh, Barry Sanders, yeah. Dennis yeah. Bryant. One of my Who one of he? my best moments of my of my career is that like when my first book came out, they put a list together of like the top uh, the top 100 cowboys of like the last 25 years, and I was on that list on the bottom part. But like Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas were on there. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! It was so cool. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm I'm smelling C. It's um, it's going to be a little proofier, and it's it's got a much more floral aroma than the others do, Fred. Now, do you want to show people what C is, and I'll, I'll we can turn away so they know what we're talking about ahead of time? Yeah. All right, boys. All right. Oh, as Ron Burgundy once said, singes the nostrils. All right. Turn away, Zabe. All right. So, everybody, this is what C is. Take a look. Right. This is what they're drinking right now. All right, you can look now. Okay. All righty. When you say floral charge, what do you mean by that? Roses, it, lilac. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I mean by that. Really? To me, that's that's how it it's that's how it smells. It has a floral bouquet, if you will, and um, I wouldn't I mean, call it sweet though. It's not sickly here, sweet. Here's the thing boys, I would have to practice my smelling to really like, I'd have to go through a bunch of fruits and a bunch of spices <laughs> and a bunch of flowers to even train myself to what's what. Charge, how do you know all these smells? Is it from your whiskey weekend? It's whiskey weekend, weekend. yes. Yeah, so when you, you know, when okay. you spend it, you spend four straight trying to change votes and you're, and you know, you, you, you do, you, 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 you become kind of practiced at it. And when you, again, when you don't have the bottle and you don't have the marketing and you don't have the label and everything else on it, you have to rely on these other things a lot more like the smell. All right. I haven't tasted this yet. Oh, 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 oh. why, why this one's a whole different kind of party right now. You got your wow. a fine whiskey there, I, huh? I don't, well, I don't even know what's going on here. Well, I've never, I've never tasted anything like this, and we ripped through yeah, exactly. 100. And George, George, this tastes like it's coated in some sort of outer space polymer. This <laughs> it has a different mouth feel. See, Boy, I know it? one term about tasting mouth feel. It feels slippery. I would almost. say there is an oily aspect to this. I think you you might be right about that. It's and it's got there's some smokiness in here too that I did not smell coming. There's some campfire in here. Mm. Yeah, there is a little bit. Man, I, Actually, this is. Wait a minute. No, it's not campfire. You're close. It's not. It's I smell. Yeah, it's Antifa riot 
fire. Is what <laughs> I. This ta- This I'm 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 swallowing the chop zone right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is liquid chop zone. Mm. This this whiskey is wild. They, like you said, I don't think I've ever tasted anything quite like this. No. Um, I and don't I'll think... I'll tell you too, boys. This is not bourbon. Uh, no, it is not bourbon. Good. Good guess. And it is not made in Kentucky. No. Is it... I is mean... It made, is, it even, it's, is it even American? It is American. It's not, it's not scotch. It is I'm not really, scotch. I'm really... I'm it, really This is an extremely it. rare whiskey type. And this, really, yeah, yeah. See, this it, it it actually numbed my lips a little bit, and it leaves a bit of uh, furnace exhaust in my nostrils, even, but not in a bad way. You know, it's not like scalding my throat or anything, but it's lively. I mean, it's 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 bouncing. I'm gonna guess this is a 95 proof. Is that? Am I in the ballpark, Fred? You want me to tell you the proof? Yeah, if you don't mind. This is 132.5 proof. Oh, my God. <laughs> it yeah. is numbing your mouth. What? No wonder why. Wow. I This is the smoothest 130 proof I've ever tasted. This, you know, normally when you when you drink anything at that level of proof, it just, the, the, the whole first thing that you get is just bong alcohol. Wow. That was not what I. That's not what I pulled out of this immediately. That's uh, that is a very smooth 130 proof. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Zay, does that, does that make right you respect there. it a little bit more? It does. Oh, it's, Honestly, oh, no, it's it got does. this whiskey has my respect. It has my respect and attention. Okay. I would buy this whiskey. It's not going to get a, as high a grade as A. But it's, I would buy this whiskey just because of how different it is, and I'd want to show it off to my friends and my other whiskey-loving friends and just, like, try this. This is going to be, like, something you've never had before. Yeah, I mean, so uh, this is a – I'm comfortable in saying that this is a category of whiskey called wheat whiskey. Ah. And this is, like, the – this is the absolute worst category in all of whiskey uh, in American styles. Because nobody can really figure out how to distill wheat and make it flavorful, mm. so what they do is they lower the they lower the uh, the wheat threshold to like 51 percent, the barely legal limit, and dump it full of corn. This wow. guy is doing it 100 percent wheat, and wow! And this is like to me like this is like the skill it took to create this bottle, knowing how hard it is to distill wheat, is one of the is one of the coolest distilling jobs. I've ever seen so wow both of you all have picked up on some very interesting stuff some very special uh, uh you know what is, what is the difference between wheat and grain well wheat is a grain uh grain whiskey is a is a scotch style you know so when you're basically you're jumping from you know styles of of you know from different countries and so grain Grain would be like, you know, cereal grains, you know, there in Scotland that's that's used. Whereas here we have it. We highlight the the designation of the wheat uh, of the grain like wheat or rye uh, or oat. There's oat whiskeys out there. Mm. And, um, you know, bourbon is is the predominant corn one. There's also a corn whiskey which goes into used barrels. But that that's a whole that's a whole nother story. All right. All right, I'm now uh, Google listen. searching wheat, barley, and rye, and I just went to pictures because I'm a dummy, because I'm trying to figure out the difference between wheat, barley, and rye, and I need pictures to tell me. And it suddenly, uh, Charge his uh, uh, his 2012 trip to Vegas pops up when uh, he went to a particular club. So that's right. Uh, my dancers were wheat, barley, and rye. My three dancers. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the- and musty. From Slovakia. <laughs> Hello, my name is Musty. Would you like lap dance? <laughs> Glap dance. She uh, she had a slight mustache and was a war survivor in the <laughs> army, but really could give you a good twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give this on my, our one hundred point scale. I'm going to give this an 
84. I wouldn't want to drink it every day or even regularly, but I'd want to have it in. I'd want to have it in my collection so that I can have it. I can pull it out from time to time and give a really unique tasting. Yeah. I'm going to think that I'm going to call this one a 92. It's probably not for everybody, but it's like the Kent to Colby of whiskeys. It's a submarine ball, junk balling. Holy shit. How do I hit this whiskey type of whiskey? Very interesting. 92. Whoa. All right. You're 90. Wow. Charge, Char what was your score? 84. And then Zabe? A 92. You guys basically flip-flopped here. We did. Yeah. So you, you, uh, wow. All right. So everyone there that, uh, was questioning Zabe's palate, was questioning his nose before in his fireball comments. <laughs> I hope I hope you feel uh, that he's redeemed himself with an, no an redeem, outstanding uh, you know call out of glass C. My my nose is keen to notes of pop tarts and deep dish. Not <laughs> apricots and flowers. <laughs> you know, now, well. I did, and that, by the way, he's not kidding. I did not <laughs> know this about Zabe until I went out to dinner with Zabe. That is a true statement. He's, he is a right down the middle of the fairway eater and does not want any real variance in the food. Palette of, what do I say, charge? Palette of a 10-year-old, stomach <laughs> of a billy goat. In other words, I can eat all kinds of stuff. I rarely get sick, but I'm not sophisticated. Well, what I what I um, what I always remember about your you know, your eating stories are the Seven Elevens and like what you would what you would get in Seven Eleven. And I just remember oh, th thinking to myself, looking pictures, looking at pictures of you. I was like, how is this motherfucker not 500 pounds? You know, <laughs> right. no, no, but I, I was on my way. So I'm working on that because you're right. It's 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 horrible and it catches up to you. So hopefully those days are in my rear view. But yeah, what, the one day I did, I did the box score. Did you ever hear about this charge? I did a box no. score by eating. No. Yeah. I was like uh, carbohydrates, 45 points, 15 rebounds, six assists. <laughs> And it got down the line, it was like salads, Ugh. DNP, coaches to sit. <laughs> That's awesome. Water, water, DNP. <laughs> Diet Coke, on the other hand. Diet Coke, minutes. 38 minutes. 5, 15, big mm -hmm. time. There you Diet go. Coke's going strong. Yeah. Terrible for you. It's terrible for you. All right, let's go to number D. D, D it is. So this one is... Um, this is not a. This is one of those barrel finishes. So I will, I will kind of throw that out there. Give that in your head. I well, won't tell, tell you that. Means. Tell Explain people what that like means. A so a barrel finish is when you take you take the bourbon, and then you put it in another barrel from a different genre of spirits. So ah. this one is uh, finished in a rum barrel, and then oh. a cognac barrel. What? So, so it's triple finish? So double, double, triple. It's double barreled. Different, double barrel. Different, different genres. That seems like you're there. Somebody's muddying the waters to me too much. We'll see. Yeah, you right. know, I don't really, I don't right. like it, it when they put. Like they're trying to do too much, charge. They are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like it when they put bourbon on the label, but I like the category. I love the flavors that are coming out of it. You know, scotch, which, you know, you hate scotch, Paul, but I do. there's uh they they will finish in a lot of different stuff. And uh, cognac will do the same. It's just that's just spirits. And same with wine. They're like, oh, this this barrel over here is ready. So we're going to put it over there. You know, it's just they've got to do something to, you know, continue uh, their uh, commentary of drinking all day. So this is a very sharp tasting. Yes. Whiskey. So lots of proof here too this is another very proofy very right. proofy this is you know all these whiskeys tonight except for the second one which stunk they're 
they're like the modern bullpen in Major League Baseball. Everyone throws 100. That's all it is. If you're in the bullpen, you better throw 100. You're throwing yep. 100 at us all the way on all these whiskeys. Now, Fred, when when these get barreled, either single barreled or double barreled, how long do they have to be in that other barrel to count as being in the barrel? Like at least a year or something? Oh, I mean, that's a great question. There's actually not any kind of legality that restricts them for putting it in there for any more than five hours. Uh, you know, okay. So, but they they do have to get what they call a formula approved by the federal government. And so the federal government will go back and ask questions and you know, we give them a hard time uh, for not really doing a good job of uh, policing spirits and some of the mischievous things that are happening on labels and some of and really there's a lot of fraudulent li- labels out there in the spirits world. But I really do think they look they try to do a good job when they're looking at the, the formulas and the label approvals to say, like, look, you put it in the cognac barrel for five minutes. You can't call it a cognac. Finish. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, but with that said, you know, a distiller spending fifteen hundred dollars for a, a cognac barrel or something like that uh, to put whiskey in it they're, they're They want to get the flavor out of it. Um, they should, so, you know. But uh, uh, always, so, always a comment when I bring up the government. Less government, more whiskey. Uh, from uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good comment right there. Yeah, well, I think I think we can all agree on that. Is there? Um, there's so much happening with this. This is uh, this is sweet, and I think that's the rum. I assume mm-hmm. that's part of the rum barrel that's given the sweetness here, and it's almost a. Unlike some other uh, sweeter flavors, like we had an A, for example, which I thought was also sweet. This is almost, to me, a sh- more of a sugary sweet um, rather than a fruity sweet, if that makes sense. That's like, how it is. It that that brown sugar or like white yes. sugar? Yes, brown sugar. Yep. Mm. Now mm. that you mention it, now that you've planted the seed in my head, yes, that's well said. Uh, I've one tried that very hard not to somehow. plant any seeds. This one somehow delivers mm-hmm. a little kick to your tongue. It does. Well after you've taken your nip i don't know what that is but the three nips i've taken about a 10 second delay it's like bang just a little bit on your tongue a little sting i I got it i get a little of it going down the esophagus but i might be i might be drinking just i might just be swigging more than you are zabe that might be part of it but i'm getting it on the tongue and and down my throat but it doesn't have yeah that is the finish so that, that little extra zing that you're getting on the old um, tongaroo, that is the finish. finish. Yeah, well, the finish is strong. No doubt about it. It's, and by the way, let me recommend a, uh, a drinking movie, Lawless, 2012, about the Bondurant brothers, which was a real, I think, believe it was historical in nature, uh, played by the great Tom Hardy. Oh, he uh, is good. Of course. Jessica Chastain, totally hot, and you see her tatas. So you got that going for you. Well, what's it about? <laughs> it's about moonshining. I like moonshining moon and battling the authorities. All right. And baby. Tom Hardy is as scary as they come as a, you know, Kentucky word slurring <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> Another okay, good well, show. My my show is he, that 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 show. By the way. Uh, like you talk to people who, you know, kind of are from that lineage and they're like, they did a good job, you know? So that shows based <laughs> on a true story. And <laughs> yeah. so I, my favorite uh, drinking show, it's not really a drinking show per se, uh, but bourbon was a big part of it. And this was a, my above the char for this week in my podcast, bourbon pursuit. And that is the hustler. Paul Newman was drinking JTS Brown like it was the best thing in the world, which at the time, it was pretty damn good. So, well, okay, we'll since, since we're all giving whiskey movies, I'm going to take Lost in Translation, one of my favorite movies anyway, With and of, of course, George, Bill Murray. Bill Murray in and, a serious role in yeah. Japan? In Japan. And he's there to film a, a commercial for Suntory Whiskey. And he drinks whiskey frequently in the hotel bar. It's a fantastic movie. And one of the great opening shots in the history of cinema with Scarlett Johansson's 
ass wearing yeah. sheer sheer panties. That's uh, that's how you that's how you start a movie with an exclamation point right there. Yeah, lost in and translation. There, and there went all my female viewers for the night. Went yeah, all that's sick probably a, you don't need them. We're not fishing for women. Come on, we're rigged. <laughs> Shark. I would like to think any female viewers that you have that like whiskey would can appreciate Scarlett Johansson's ass. Guarantee. Any any female who shoots her whiskey straight is already saying, oh, hell yeah. I love right. Scarlett Johansson. Absolutely. Love that ass. Absolutely. Um, did you show that? You didn't have a chance to show this bottle yet, Fred, did you? Mm-mm. No, people want to know what it is, but let's go ahead. Why don't we do this? Why don't you guys give it a score, and then uh, and then I'll just do the big reveal all along. I'm gonna give uh, D an 85. I liked oh, it. Oh wow! Um, I thought it was a it was it was a little proofier and just straight alcohol than I wanted. But I I do if it's gonna be that proofy, I tend to want it a little <laughs> sweet, and it was a little sweet. I didn't love the full bouquet of flavor, but I I thought it was good. Not great, Zabe. I uh. I'm going to give it a 90. I smell a little birthday cake in here. That's the overall <laughs> notes of it. Birthday cake. But good. I like it. I, I like the way you celebrate your birthday. So, all right. So we have a, we have a situation here. We, oh, have, no, a we have a tie. tie? We have a oh, tie no. for, for, the, for oh. the best. Oh, no. Oh, we no, got to go to overtime, Charge. Well, it's terrible. It More is. Money. So Whoever let's, uh, let's have a... going to end up winning the overtime. What are overtime rules here? Do we? Is there a man on second? Are we just putting a man on second? Well, <laughs> by the way, that is the second. dumbest thing ever. I think that just... <laughs> I think putting a man on second for baseball, it's going to... Yeah. Changing the way no, the game is played when you do that, but... Second I mean, the seriously, there's only 60... Washington football team. There, there's your dumbest. That. that that's that's pretty bad. Uh, so the way we would do this is that we would taste off A and um, C to see if we have a favorite. To see if, see if you have changed your mind, either one of you, to go okay. up a point or down a point or up a point. Well, part of the okay, but here's the problem, Fred. A was so good, I drank it all. I have like, yeah. I have, I have a just a drizzle left. That's it. Yeah, that, I'll that do is, my best. That is a problem, by the way. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was so good. I just like. So let's let's this. just keep it there. Let's just keep it there. Let's have Zabe go back to A. Okay. And have him compare to C. Um, and I'll remind you of your comments. Uh, we we might have a problem here. I I might. <laughs> I may have lost the track of which one is which. (laughs) Yeah, there's just sort of a mess off to the left here. I think I got it. Well, I should be able to smell it. I'll know the one that sucks because it'll have no it'll have no flavor. A has A is going to be too proofy for Zabe. It's just it's hard hitting. (coughs) Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's A. Okay. I'm gonna have a little more C. Yeah, that's B. That guy has no flavor. B is out, so it doesn't even matter. Do you want to know Take what B, B is? Out. Yeah. Pick your pick your. Uh, so B. Our loser. Is, wait, can I guess? Yeah. Uncle Jed's bathtub. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, <laughs> very close. It's actually. Damn. Old overhold. It's Blanton's. It's Blanton's. Yes! I knew it. Oh, I was going to say God! that. Oh, I was going oh, to say no. Blanton's. I should have said it. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Unbelievable. No, this is unbelievable. The yeah, most I sought after, it. one of the most sought after bourbons in all the world. Holy when you shit. say sought after, what you mean is overrated. Overrated. Oh, my God. Overrated. <laughs> To quote Steve yeah. Saban, who forgot to bring the flavor? Yeah, holy <laughs> shit. How Charge. about that? So, so my brother, big on Blanton's, 
and got me a bottle for my birthday and I was all proud of it. And I would drink it and everything and not think twice. And I know how much it's sought after. And so I was at National Airport and they've got this duty free little section on the wall in Terminal A. Yeah. And they had a couple of Blantons there. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to go buy them. So I go, up, I go to check out and they go, can I see your boarding pass? And it was a boarding pass for Milwaukee. And they go, <laughs> no. They go, no, no you, you don't understand the, the concept here. Yeah, right, right. It's a country. Yep. Yep. So I put them yep. back. That's where, you have, that's where you have to pay somebody else to go buy your Blantons for you at the airport who's got a boarding pass or just borrow well, their boarding pass. Right. But guess what? Problem solved. Yeah. I have now learned that Blanton's is insanely overrated. It wow. is, Fred. I've had Blanton's yeah. probably five times. Never bought, never bought a bottle. So I never see a bottle for sale. Every time I walked away, going, ah, I know it comes from Buffalo Trace. I'd rather have Buffalo Trace at, at thirty-eight bucks a bottle. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it, it really is. This, this bottle is gorgeous and it just like screams kentucky you got the little horsey on top yeah Yeah. you know it's it it's kind of voluptuous when you hold it it's uh it's a really nice bottle and the truth is that it's a single barrel and single barrels are very very inconsistent but i have never had a blends uh that for me rated above 87 points like it okay. has always been kind of like a B, you know, and yeah. um, incredible you know, pe- people are chiming in saying like Blanton's is my jam. You know, I'm I know. mad, you know, people are pe- don't be mad. If you like it, you like it. Yeah, right. we're, you know, we're cool with whatever you, you like, know, people charge. Tell me if you've heard this before. There's a certain uh, sect of people that think Bose produces bland audio quality bose i'm a bose fanboy i love bose bose qc35 headphones i got the bose speakers i got the portable bose speaker i love it but some people think it's bland i got my Um, bose on right now yeah i um i have found and i've owned plenty of bose stuff over the years i don't hate bose but for me unless i need a compact design for some reason i don't buy bose if I need a compact design, then I'm on Bose. I had some of the, the worst headphones I've ever owned in my life were a pair of Bose. Um, huh. But I've also had some good ones, and I've had some good Bose products that I use today. And so I think it's a I think it's a mixed bag with Bose. What people don't like, and what I, I and I don't like either, is necessarily they won't give you any information on any of the things that they make. They won't give you any sound spectrums or any, you know, anything like that. They just got to go. They just say, you know, you listen to it. If you like it, you buy it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. I, and, are you a fan of Beats? No, those are the worst. They literally put ma- they literally put lead weights in their speakers for Beats and the headsets to give you the illusion that they're substantial <laughs> by putting weights into the, into the headsets. Yes, wow. Beats are all for show. Beats are for people who want to be seen listening to music, not yeah. for people who want right. to listen to music. They're for LeBron James fan wankers. Yeah, that's the, those are the big baller, uh, the big baller headphones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although, although I will say, Bo, uh, charge Bose. Can you tell I'm a little bit tipsy? I mean, Fred has got me definitely. Oh. Off my my balance here, with Dave. This he's, he's fed us a straight diet of 120, 130 proof whiskey. So, <laughs> yeah. No. Here's the thing about here's the thing about Beats. My Beats over the ear headphones. They're louder by two clicks than Bose will get. And because of I guess all my years in radio being deaf, yeah. I want that extra loudness. I'm like Nigel Tufnell in Spinal Tap. Turn it up. These headphones go to 11, right? yeah. a little bit louder. <laughs> I think my daughter's ready for that movie, by the way. 14. Oh! I think she's ready for the final tap. The catch is, totally. you've got the cucumber because wrapped in the tinfoil. Because your daughter loves music. You're she does. Taking your daughter. Uh, Fred, you got to understand this. Charge has the most wonderful relationship with his daughter. He has taken her to all kinds of concerts, driven all over city to city, 
bunch yeah. of weird bands nobody's heard of. She plays guitar. It's the greatest thing. That's yeah. awesome. I, you know, I mean, I'm a relatively new dad, so hearing stuff like that right there just it just it warms my heart. But like, it, it's a shitty time to to have a six year old because you can't like we can't play t ball, we can't do soccer. You know, yeah. there's just so much stuff but, we can't do. But your six-year-old's not going to remember much of this year, and that that does work in ultimately in your six-year-old's favor, which is I I think nice. So yeah. You know what we have been doing? We've been finding. Uh, we've been like so. You know, I, you mentioned from the top like these incredible like uh, musicians that I'm getting on the show. Uh, I've got um, uh, I had Derek Trucks. Uh, I just interviewed Derek Trucks, who's you know the guitarist for Almond Brothers, and then he has a Derek Trucks band. Uh, we, we were just spent the weekend like watching him and like, so yeah. I've been in any time I have a musician that, you know, we just sit down as a family and we just sit there and listen to it. Now, mom and I were, we're, we're drinking a little something, something, but it's just like, we have our own little like concerts in our home. Uh, but music is a big, big part of our life. So I love that you take her to concerts and stuff. So. We're, we're all being um, that's right. And and by the well, way, hey, six year olds is it's that's when I started my daughter on guitar and guitar lessons. We bought her a junior guitar. It's three quarter size, and she started lessons at six. And and it's it's not too young. You can uh, you can start her jamming. And by the way, go with the guitar, Fred. If you're going to do an instrument, don't do the trumpet. Who the hell wants to know yeah, the trumpet? Right. You do the guitar, and you get to play all your favorite songs for the rest of your life. Right. Do the guitar. No clarinet. No right. clarinet. No harp, no bass, no uh, uh, saxophone. There's two instruments to give your kid. Yes. Guitar, piano. That's it. That's it. Everything else is a waste of time and money. You know, I was I was scrolling through like old Oklahoma State football games and the and like our national champion trumpet came up in YouTube. So I was like, oh, what the hell? I watch it. And her stuff was beautiful. I mean, she was like so good. I was like, wow. all right, I, like, I got to find her. She's a fucking manager at Walmart now. It's like, <laughs> so she has like, you know, I mean, hey, she has like no profession. Got a good health she's, plan. Don't knock it. Well, I, I get it, but she's like at the top of her game, you know, and like if she would mm-hmm. played any other instrument, you know, like you're saying, she'd be on stage anywhere. I mean, she was yeah. incredible. Here's- Here's here's what's also I think underrated. Apple AirPods, but with the silicone ear oh. dongles, because my ears basically reject these AirPods pretty easily. But you put them in there like that, oh, they, they will in. stay in there no matter what. And I'm telling you, the sound out of these little fuckers are so good, it'll blow your mind. And it integrates with your iPhone seamlessly. Yeah. I highly recommend them. Now, they, the new AirPod Pros are designed with a little silicone nub on it to jam in there. Yeah. I don't like that. I like them sitting a little bit outside the ear canal with these. Okay. Could you, could We've you hijacked his bourbon broadcast. Yeah, we have. Well, no, not at all. This is, this is what I do. I just drink and talk. But Derek Simmons came, came in and says, I played the trumpet. Trumpet. And I love Blanton's. I feel played. I feel played. <laughs> listen, Loser. Eric, listen, I love the trumpet. My only point was is that this incredible musician didn't have an opportunity for a professional career afterward uh, because the yeah. demand wasn't there. It, only to, like, Zabe's point of, like, play the guitar. As for Blanton's, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. right, I'm going to let somebody else wage that battle. While people, other people are fighting to try to find a bottle of Blanton's, I'm going to be trying to find a bottle of Eagle Rare, which I think is far better. It comes from the same distillery. I'd much rather have Eagle Rare. Hey, while we're talking music and bourbon and audio quality, because it's all mixed together. This is just life stuff, right, Fred? Mm-hmm. Right, Charge? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this one goes out to Derek, Mr. Trumpet Player. Have you ever heard of Trombone Shorty? Oh, my God. Amazing. No. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Charge. I had never heard of this guy until I stumbled upon him while on vacation just flipping around. This cat will blow your fucking mind. New Orleans born. He plays the trombone, the trumpet. He has mastered, right, Fred, mm-hmm. this circular breathing technique where he will belt out on a trumpet a super high note 
and carry it for two minutes. No lie. And his cheeks puff out like Dizzy Gillespie. And then he's like, and then he somehow breathed in and it goes on and on and on. It's amazing. Google tonight, or not Google, but go to YouTube. Um, no, I'm watching right now. I'm watching Trombone Shorty right this minute. And I love that it's got this this big, this big brass section. Not just trombone. Oh, yeah. But it's also got, well, saxophones technically woodwind. Sax, trumpet, bass. That's uh, that's pretty cool. The um, Yeah, I like that. Now, the, so the circular like breathing thing was made famous by Kenny G, who has the world really? record for the longest note. I feel like Kenny G, though, like, is not a brand you want to be associated with. No, it's you know? not. No. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I, I just like, you know, if someone were to question. compare it and say like, oh, who hey, is, you're in Kenny G's league. I'm like, oh, shit, I need to go somewhere else. All right. All right. Yeah. Who is softer to admit you like Kenny G or Michael Bolton? Kenny G, oh. Michael Bolton. Oh, God. They have the same hair. I know. Uh, not a coincidence. How about how about the uh, Lonely Island where they do the Kenny Bolt or the uh, the the Michael Bolton spoof? <laughs> do you know that? that? No, do you know that? Do you know Lonely Island charge? No. Do I need to? Is ah. that the next thing on my YouTube? Is yeah, Lonely look Island? at that. Yes, it, you don't know Dick in a Box. Well, you I don't know Mother Lover. Box. You don't know Jizz in My Pants. You don't know I'm on a boat. Come on. So the and, the, and the whiskey Burger. people are like, all right, what's A, C, and D now? We gotta know. We gotta know. But listen, yeah, right. Trombone yeah, Shorty. Exactly. Yeah, we should probably get back. Back to now, the whiskey. Here we D, we're still Shorty on our tiebreaker, by the way. We did, D is out. Right, so D did not finish in the running, so I think we can re safely reveal D. Yeah, so D is uh, four gate, uh, batch six. This is up uh, for my. Uh, this is up for my whiskey of the year. It's is a. This is a, a fruit bomb with some some peppering in there, but uh, also a lot a lot of brown sugar, and um, I really really There's like this. A, right? Yeah. I feel like this yeah. has like a great shot of uh, of winning my taste off. Just knowing my it's really who, good, Fred. Who, right, who makes Fourgate? Fourgate is a. It's got a few blenders involved. One of them is a um, is a former colleague. Well, I guess he's still a colleague, but he's a whiskey writer turned like blender, and um, and he does a good job and he gets some good stocks. The one being against them is they're really friggin' expensive. They're like 200, yeah. 250 bucks. Woo! So, yeah. Woo and yeah. Jay Burke says four gate is so good, but so expensive. Yeah, it that's wow. They they you spend a lot of money there. 250 bucks. I've never seen it for sale. I don't even know where I'd go to find that. Is it well, something that's widely distributed? You live in Minnesota, Paul. Right, you know? I know. It's that's a problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do I have to go to the? Do I have to go to the distillery if I want to get a bottle. No, I mean there's no distillery, uh, but you know you would do well to come to Kentucky, bring a friend's truck and just stock up. But you can now, also you can buy you can buy seal you can buy uh, Fourgate online from a website called Sealbox Sealbox.com. You can buy it and they'll ship it to you. All right. If I want to buy a seal, can I get it at Sealbox in a box? Uh, gutted. Gutted. Yes. All right. That's the way I like it. Uh, all right. Now we're at a point where we got to break our tie between A and C. Um, we don't I'm, know what C is yet. We don't know what A is yet either. A, I went back and had just, just my little drip whoa, 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 of it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought A was four game. No, that was D. That was D. Uh, okay. Did you have a little bit of a... Uh, Rum and Coke before we came on, Zabe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it was? It was, I, I think he had some fireball before he came on. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how to, how to I, I don't know how to break this tie. I liked A better, but I thought C was also good. So I, I don't have a problem with C winning, but I liked A, I think is just too proofy for Zabe. And if I think if it comes down to Zabe making this call, he should. He would pick C. I would pick well, A because really, I like the proofy stuff. Guys, you're really looking at two different styles. This is basically, you're basically looking at like a, um, I'm going to say C 
Yeah, it's C, right? Yeah, C is like a, fin- a finesse runner. Rank C, D, A, B. C, C D, A, 1, B? D, 2, A, 3, B, 4. I, I'm okay breaking the tie. I just had C again. C's good. I'm okay breaking the tie. It's a little smoky for my taste. I don't love the smoky, but I prefer A. But if we want to break the tie, we need a winner here. I'm willing to I'm willing to go with Zabe's winner and take C. So uh, I'm glad to see I'm glad to see that you all, you know, amicably, you know, make this decision so I don't have to come in and make it in the middle of the year before I <laughs> before I taste them blind. But yeah. what, what you all have chosen as your – this is going to do your heart some good to know that you chose a little bitty tiny distillery out of Michigan that the family uh, made themselves. Journeyman. Wow. Uh, what is distillery. that? Distillery. Journeyman. Whips and whiskey. So this, oh, is, a, this, is, a, this is a small distillery mm-hmm. that um, – doesn't have the budget of the big boys, has heart, you know, goes into smaller barrels. Uh, so you you basically just picked an undrafted free agent <laughs> that just came in and won the Super Bowl. You know. All right. So that's well, awesome. Kurt Journeyman of whiskeys, right there, out of nowhere, and that's all wheat, right? Yep, all wheat. They have wheat. somehow tamed the wheat, which you say is hard to do. Uh, yes, to give to give wheat flavor uh, after distilling it, which I think maybe their uh, their small barrels does the trick for them or the climate. Yeah. But this is um, this this is something. So we're having you we're know, having some undrafted uh, commentary coming up of like yes, you brought up Kurt Warner. Yeah. Rod Smith, Rod Smith was a good wide receiver. That yeah, uh, was good. He was. He's Hall of Famer good. Three amig- three, amig- three no. amigos. No, not I'm Hall not of Fame good, but he's good. Um, it's funny. It's funny that it's called corset whips and whiskey. Is that what the label says, Fred? Yeah, that's right. And it's because that that's a great description. Because when I drank it, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? It's got this crazy <laughs> mouth feel. It feels slippery. It's got a pow to it. It's got flavor. Unbelievable. All right. So, so where do I find it? Where do I get it? Uh, actually, there is uh, there are a couple liquor stores in D.C. that carry this regularly. Uh, Modern Liquors carries this. And um, why can't I just go to their website and order up? You, you can try, but but because of the archaic laws that are still on the I books know. from Prohibition, it's I know it's pretty okay. it's pretty tough. But All right. So why doesn't somebody why doesn't have a somebody have a database of exactly where all of these niche brands are to go find them? Because they. You have to remember that a lot of the liquor stores um, are basically ran by mom and pops. How many times have you driven down the road and you just saw like a big like red light in the corner? One of the letters are are blinking and it's saying yeah. liquor. You know, yeah. They they don't yeah. have the software for someone to okay. Uh, that, so, that's a so lot of this liquor. Is part, charge. This is part of being a fan of the brown. It's a bit of a game. It's a bit of a hop. It's a bit of a, hey, I tasted this stuff that's different. It's wild. You know, it's a wheat based. And I'm going to go find it. And it's, you know, you go on the pursuit. That's true. Did we lose charge? I think we lost charge's audio for some reason. Yeah, no, he's just, just doing that right now. Uh-oh. I can't hear you. You're gone, charge. <laughs> log out and log back in again. Damn it, technology! Isn't it the worst? Uh, it is. So this this is a so this bottle or, or this distillery is in a former corset and whips uh, and buggy manufacturing home. So 
the, okay. take a take a look at the label there. You can see it's a little. Yeah, I almost needed to take a picture of it. Um, awesome, out of Michigan, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's one good thing Michigan's done. Oh boy, here come hey. the letters. Here come the letters. Okay, I got my picture of it. Um, thank you to uh, Scott Soul. He says Blackwell's Wine has it. And I said, where is Blackwell's Wine? Uh, oh, it's in the Bay Area of California. That's great. That's only 3,121 miles from me. Perfect. Thank now, they you. may ship. California does have some <laughs> liquor stores that ship. Yeah, I was going to say, can you what what states ship to what other states in terms of you know? you're actually you're actually in the best area, uh, D.C. Washington D.C. Uh, the liquor stores there ship, and uh, you can get pretty much anything anywhere. And okay. um, uh, hey, but they're uh, like, are, are we back? You guys got me? Yeah, you're yeah. back, Charge. All right. Yeah. By the way, All Doug right. Pendleton Doug Pendleton says that Buggy Whip is lower proof but the same juice. So if you want that whiskey at a little bit less of a kapow, buggy whip. Now let's ask the audience, because I'm not seeing him come up in the uh, in the software for the live stream. Uh, I'm looking our, on YouTube. Our, can, you, can you hear him on YouTube? So YouTube, can I, you all hear? I see him on YouTube. You can see him on YouTube. Yeah, his comments. Feel like we lost. Oh, him again. Scott Soul says that they do deliver his Bay Area uh, liquor store. So there we go. Okay. Mm. We we All can right. deal with this. Right. Audio. List here. Let me list the bourbons or the whiskeys again. A was. Uh, A was. Barrel, bourbon, batch twenty five. Oh, okay. We so never this we didn't is, get that uh, yet. Okay. This is a cash drink blend. Mm. Okay. This is our strong. Uh, I would say. I'd say this probably comes in second place. Uh, without doing the numbers, it's between uh, this and D per second. Okay. Uh, B was Blanton's. What was C again? C was our corsets whip. C was your winner. C. Corsets whips. Journeyman mm -hmm. Distillery. Yep. And then dead last. In case people uh, are just now coming in, Blanton's. No, B, B was Blanton's. Yeah, dead, but it was and I, it finished dead last. last. Right, but what was what was choice D? D I'm is four this, gate. Uh, this one right here. Four gate. Okay. Okay, there we go. Good. Journeyman Distillery. Look at that. I'm looking at their website right now. It looks hey, good. Hey, there's Paul. Yeah, so I'm back. Guys, this is this is a big win for a small distillery that you know, you know, that's having a hard go right now, as long along with a lot of other distillers. So your palates, your palates gave life to something. It's also in my uh, whiskey of the year contenders. Um, wow. It's good whiskey. It's good whiskey. Hop, cask, and barrel. So, Hop, help cask, me barrel in D.C. sells that uh, journeyman corset whips and whiskey. Nice. Fred, help me understand if why you say that it's a hard time for this industry when I'm going to the liquor store and I, all these people are boozing at home. And I understand right. it's stuff on the bars, and I think it is hard on the bars. It's been good. Yeah, but I would think for just, you know, those producing whiskey that this is a good time. People are drinking like crazy. Well, they're going home. So and they're going, the, you know. Yeah. So the or smaller it's distillers, gotta be the bars. if you're a large if you're a large distillery, you know, you have uh, you have the liquid and you have like an established account system. A new distillery, like say it's been out since 2015, five years old in five states, kind of like putting it out there, everything, a good chunk of their income was based off of their in-store sales and their tasting yeah. room. So nearly all the governors out there have basically said no in-store tasting. Uh, they've allowed bars to reopen, but tasting rooms at distilleries 
have not had exemptions. And so that would be a good chunk of their revenue, just like traffic coming in. Let's say 20 people a day coming in. Uh, they taste a product. They like it. They buy $200 worth of, of merch and booze. That's just, you know, per person. That's just gone. That's gone for yeah. the majority of people. And then you take okay. the, And if it opens back up, there's still that good chunk of people. Like, oh, well, I don't want to go out and, and get the corona, you know, so – yeah, so that's okay. That's it. All right, I just got this note on YouTube. Somebody said, "I love the fact that there have been big skins and Vikings news since this started." And I'm like, "Oh shit, what happened?" This just in: Alex Smith has been cleared for full football activity. Wow, really? <laughs> Holy cow! Boom! We My didn't think it would ever happen. Blown twice. Tonight. He's the best. First, he's the best quarterback with, on your team. You know that, right? First, with Blanton's being horribly overrated. Secondly, Alex Smith has been cleared for football activity. I don't know what the Vikings news is, though. Help me out here. I don't either. I don't know the Vikings news either. I don't think there is Vikings news. Somebody says there is. I don't think so. We signed Mike Zimmer, you know, a day ago, so maybe they're looking at old Vikings news, but. I don't think we we don't have anything that's going to rival the return of Alex Smith and one of the great what potentially great feel good stories of all time. Oh, he could have, he could have retired. Uh, the, Vikes news is him. The, Zimmer, the Vikes news is the Zimmer extension. That's not news to you. No, that was that it, it was widely reported yesterday. That was going to happen. Okay. I think you I think you I think you put ink on paper today. Hey, by the way, whatever happened with the. Uh, you know, his his wife committed suicide. Did anything ever come out of that? Did we learn anything more from what? From... I don't think she committed suicide. I think she died of cancer. Okay. Mike Zimmer. Yeah. Awkward. Yeah, Awkward. I don't think I don't think she I don't think it was a suicide situation. Um, it yeah. is job, to the best Vinic. of my knowledge. I've never Stick heard it described that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. Okay. I think it's okay if I say that he's dating. I mean, I know that, you know, I know that from just being around town and stuff and hearing things and, sure. you know, well, yeah, you I, think, I think he's got, I think he's got a girlfriend, but he gets to do that. It's been, you know, suitable morning period. Yeah, happened, it was so. definitely, it was, I, I it was imagine, natural causes. I got to imagine. Yeah. 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 I got to imagine that Mike Zimmer is a pretty intense and boring date. I mean, good football coach. Man, I can't see him being a barrel of laughs. Um, he actually is. He's actually pretty fun. Um, he's cool. the guy. You know what, Fred? I think he'd like to be on this show. There's. Uh, he likes a cocktail or two. I think he's more of a wine drinker, though. But he's. Um, he's. He's actually. He's a. He's a fun guy. He's a funny guy. Uh, super intense, Sabe. You're right about that. But he's actually got. He's actually got a good. Um, good. He's well, got a good after sense that of little bit of mine, there ain't no way. All right. So there was who. His wife died hey, of guess what? Suicide. Hey, Fred. At least, at least she was dead. I have <laughs> on multiple occasions asked interview subjects about their parents who have died on the air live. Yeah. Pretty embarrassing. Morgan Pressel and work done. So look, I've run into some you know goalposts in my day. Not pretty. How do you, wh wh where did the sweat bead form on your body when you? Where they were like, yeah, my, my parents are still alive. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 they were dead, and I asked them if about, they were yeah, about them. As, yeah, as ask they about were their alive. dead parents, yes. Uh, Which is even worse. Even worse. So, oh, well. Mm. So, B, uh, B By wasn't way, very good. <laughs> no. <laughs> about that. So about what that. Is this? So that, what do that I, boring ass Blantons. I'm so now, now I am hit with an ethical quandary. Okay, there are lots and lots and lots of Blanton fanatics out there, oh, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Do I make a point to say, hey, you know, I was on this blind taste test with one of the best whiskey experts in the country, in the world, even, and uh, I tasted Blantons, didn't know I was tasting, and I was like. Who forgot to bring the taste? I don't know if you should be buying this stuff. Should I be that guy, or should I just quietly tuck that in my pocket and not bring it up? 
um, bring it up. You know? Yeah, I think yeah. Go to go to war with your opinions on this. That's what I say. Really? Yeah. Because I will be bringing other people down. The people who love Blanton's, who swear it's the best, who go out and find it and pay a premium for it. Well, what good is me shitting on it going to do? Besides, like I said, my palate is that of a 10-year-old. What do I know? <laughs> it's not chicken nuggets. You're not you interested. Know, I, I'll say that, look, man, this is always a this is a surprise. Uh, this is always a surprise for people because, because it's so hyped, you know? And it's also, right. I do this, I do the same experiment with like, um, you know, Pappy 23 year old and I'll put it in a flight with some everyday stuff and people will pick it. People will pick the 23 year old and they're like, well, shit, that's really good. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, you hate it because you can't get it, but typically it is really, really good. You don't hear that about Blanton's necessarily because it's a single barrel. Yeah, the stock is much younger. Um, mm -hmm. And I dare say you put that in a flight with the – you put that in a flight with like Eagle Rare, uh, Buffalo Trace. Um, let's see. What, what's another one? Um Elmer T. Lee, you know, from Buffalo Trace. And you know what? Boom. They're going to they're going to like it. And yeah, it's it's um, it's crazy. But this is why you taste blind. Like if you go in like if the bottle, if you look, you're looking at that bottle. If you pour this, if you poured it out of this bottle and you're looking at it like, oh, my God, everybody's telling me I'm supposed to like it. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it on my pro I'm feeling it on my palate. It's making me feel things, you know. That's why you got to no. do it blind. So do this with your buddy. Don't tell him. All right. Uh, someone asked on uh, YouTube, uh, how do you feel about Old Crow? All right. Funny story. Um, so He's I hate already Old ripped Crow. Old, you've already ripped Old Crow once in this podcast. Yeah. I mean, I fucking hate Old Crow. It's like, to me, <laughs> this, is, this is like the whiskey that used to be the greatest whiskey of all time. And Jim Beam bought it, and they just fucking shit on it. It's like, it, it, it's kind of like getting Roy Halladay and saying you're gonna be a middle, <laughs> you're gonna be a middle reliever, you know. <laughs> that that's what they did with Old Crow in 1987, and so today it's like a, it's like a bottom shelf bourbon. That's it. And so for all these years, I have not bought a bottle of it. I just kind of look at it and scowl and like, fuck you, Jim Beam. And then the other day for my under $15 uh, taste off, um, I bought it. It was there. And I was like, there's, I have to do this blind because if I'm staring at this while I'm pouring it and I taste it, I'm just going to hate it so much that I won't even allow myself to, you know, taste it and taste it analytically. And, and sure enough, it came in third with a shot to win. Wow. So, mm. yeah. It's now, well, is, let it be is, noted. Let it be noted, Charge, uh, that tonight Fred has attributed uh, Mike Zimmer's wife's death to a suicide, incorrect, <laughs> and compared Old Crow to a pitcher who died tragically in an experimental <laughs> aircraft crash. So we got those. Good. Uh, Fred is way darker than I ever knew. Uh, we've learned a well, lot about Fred today. A little wow. bit of bourbon. I, I, I thought I thought Holiday was like a great pitcher. That's that's I guess that's why I brought him up. I mean, I thought he was the best pitcher of the generation. I, I thought he was better than Roger Clemens. I did. He was great. He was, he was great. great. I thought he was but, the best uh, pitcher. Speaking of while we're on baseball, my my Minnesota Twins that set the all time home run record last year just hit a home run on the first pitch of the season to the first nice. batter. Home first run, pitch, first win. batter, one. Yes, and now they have uh, now they've got bases loaded with one out in the first inning. After that, so things are going well for my squad at the moment. You know, I like the fact we can mix in box scores finally. You know, God yeah, bless that. that. Yeah, we've earned it. it. If, if there's one thing that I know we need is more baseball scores in our whiskey tasting get-togethers. Yeah. Uh, Marlins won, Phillies nothing right now. That one's middle five. Uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh, St. Louis scoreless in the middle of the first inning. 
<laughs> Boston two, Baltimore nothing, bottom three. Mm-hmm. And apparently 12 members of the Seattle Mariners have contracted COVID and are in the ICU. <laughs> There's what? your baseball no. update for tonight, everybody. <laughs> so I'm about to I'm about to pour a little bit from my shelf here. I just grabbed this. This what is, is uh this is from Iowa. This is Slipknot's whiskey. Yeah, the, I've heard about this. Slipknot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's because actually, I'm in Minnesota. It's really, really friggin' good. Slipknot, you say. Mm-hmm. The band Slipknot. No relation, I hope. Uh, what do you what do you like about sl- Slipknot whiskey? Uh, well, this one is like it actually gives a it brought a lot of attention to a distillery in Iowa that I didn't really give much attention to before. Like I was just like, yeah, uh, I tasted your whiskey. It's it's you know it's not good, but it's because they were proofing it down too low. Slipknot came in there and said, we need to jack this proof up. You know, let's get a little higher. Yeah. And so this is 99 proof. And like their whiskey really shows, um, you know, at 99 proof. And it's, it's, man, it's good. It's really, really good. Well, you're, you are listed. Your quote is exactly that. And it's on the homepage. Number nine, no clowning around. Slipknot number nine whiskey is Really good, which is the exact phrase you just gave it, attributed to Fred Minnick right here on their homepage. They have that on their homepage. That happens. They do have it. They have it on their homepage. You, you carry know, that I, kind I, of weight, Fred. And just so you know, is they're Conor, probably going to grab your quotes, too, McGregor's from this whole thing. Is whiskey still straight shit? Sure. Sorry to jump in. Word. Well, what say you it say again? Uh, no, I didn't say anything. That's fine. Go ahead, Zabe. Is, is Conor McGregor's... Proper 12 whiskey, still shit. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. I did actually put an interview request into Conor McGregor. Uh, I doubt that he would watch the show, but it is really bad. I mean, it is like, it's one of the worst uh, whiskeys I have tasted in, in, wow. uh, that's that's been put out in like, you know, 10 years. It's bad. And the reason I, is, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you told me was, he is such a celebrity and he was going to put out so much volume that he had to contract for a juice that was going to be of low quality because he needed a lot of it. That's right. And, I mean, basically, now. they crushed the volume story, you know, so like they're out there like totally, um, you know, just putting this stuff. I mean, they have they started rivaling Jameson in some markets uh, and that's. Really? Yeah, that and yeah, and that's. I mean, Conor McGregor is a guy who sells tickets. You know, I mean, he's he he kind of. Did you see the video of Conor McGregor? And I'm going to put this in the uh, YouTube chat window. Did you see when he assaulted the guy at the bar over his whiskey? And I think that's when everything started to turn for him. That was the moment where people were like. you know what? Fuck you, Conor McGregor. Punch an old man for not liking your whiskey. <laughs> you know? Right. He, he was like, here, have some whiskey in the old man charge. Did you ever see this charge? No, I didn't see this. Oh, it's he great. punched an old man because he insulted his yes! whiskey. Yes, oh. Conor McGregor's like, here, have some proper 12. And the guy's like, no, nah, I don't want that swill. And he gets all pissed off. Next thing you know, he's punching some old man in Ireland. Well, listen, yeah, if Connor big... if Connor McGregor offers you whiskey, don't insult the whiskey right to his face. That's but he's he, the, he's an old you... Irish man, you know, like so like they don't give a fuck about anything. And now there is that. And and I tell you, like I've seen the video uh, a few times in the light. I mean, like I was just like, did he punch him or did he just like bump into him? Like his like it's kind of like an example of like his how quick Connor McGregor is. And like how bad the technology that captured him is, because he was like, and I mean, it's like lightning. <laughs> the dude like, and then the old man is just kind of like, ah, oh, there's a flea on me over here. I gotta, I gotta like drink <laughs> my beer here. <laughs> Dark, I put the link to the video in the chat window on our Skype, so you can oh, right check there. it out. Thank you, I appreciate that. Is there a right. good celebrity whiskey? The Wayne Gretzky whiskey, the Bob Dylan whiskey. Bob Dylan is trash. That that whiskey is absolute trash. I, I don't. I think they ran that through like a metallic copper filter. Horrible. <laughs> 
And what? so is there is there a good the, the Metallica whatever is there good celebrity whiskey? Uh, I would I, you know so Slipknot won my th this bottle right here you know this one my celebrity whiskey of the year. Oh, uh, so this is related to the band Slipknot? It, no, legitimately, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Bummer. And and Clown the uh, you know the percussionist he 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 partook in the blending and so. Um, you know, that one, this is really, 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 really good. I mean, for fuck's sake, I, you, you just quoted me that I said that, but it, yeah, it's, it's really like one good. of those, it, it's, it, it, and when I, when you hear me say really, really, really good, what I'm getting at is like, this is something that I would drink every single day, but it's not a special occasion. Like it's not, it hasn't graduated to like that moment of like smoking a cigar um okay to celebrate my my son's wedding or something like okay. that okay yeah yeah you know how so about, how about blackened isn't blackened by metallica considered good uh man i'm kind of uh blackens blackens okay. good but it's a blend it's different so i like to say it's not there's not a lot of whiskeys like it you know it's it's um it it falls in the category of mm, you know, let's, let's let's go down the food plane here so like if you there are uh if you don't like sushi you know there is if you don't if you're not open to sushi there's no way in hell you'll like what i think is the best sashimi um in town there's no way right you know right. so like so if you're not open to that style of whiskey um you won't like it now now and i'll say you know to that point the the way that the slipknot whiskey is it's more my jam it's more it's more of a straight whiskey uh higher proof you know no mm -hmm. uh, now uh kurt over here is bringing up uh uh sweetens cove uh, and that is, of course, uh, Peyton Manning's whiskey. That motherfucker's good. That is oh, really, is it? Okay. Yeah, that's really fucking good. It's um, and I have some in here somewhere. Oh, I got a bottle Sweetness over there. Sweetness Cove. Sweetness, Sweetness Cove, named after the uh, Sweetness Cove, named after the golf course. I'm gonna grab the bottle no, and break right. it down for you. You know who doesn't? Course, right? Yeah. You know who doesn't have yeah, to ever buy his own whiskey? Zay, you you don't have to buy your whiskey because you won the Whiskey Guillotine League. So you got 16 bottles that you can leech off of for the next couple of years. Fred hasn't bought a bottle of whiskey in probably four years. Doesn't oh, have to. Oh, come on now. I buy whiskey all the time. I'm the only one buying whiskey over here. Oh, boy. Cry me a river, Charge. Enough already. I gotta pay. I gotta pay my own hard-earned money. You guys just gravy training. It's got well, so I easy. did choose a profession. Uh, hold on. Uh, that got me to sip <laughs> Terry, Terry Bradshaw has a bourbon. Uh, yes, they. They. Uh, I have not seen a bottle in stores, and they have not reached out to me to taste their whiskey. Uh, I do know about it. It's rapidly aged, which is like. You know, devil's magic for, um, you know, for trying to make the whiskey taste better, quicker. Right. You know. Yeah. Rapidly aged. It always seems like there's some chemical process that I ultimately would not be happy with. When I've talked to people that I've talked to people, I, I know people that own distilleries doing this rapid aging. What I always come back to is I've never met anybody in my life that has said what I really want for my whiskey is I want it to be four months old that tastes like four years old. Nobody, yeah. just who, nobody microwave wants Microwave whiskey. Mike, yeah, that's it's, a great way to put it. Microwave whiskey, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's like, uh, you know, animal meat that is uh, genetically engineered, genetically modified, right? There you go. Oh, well. So this is a, this is a sample bottle of uh, uh, Peyton Manning's uh, whiskey. I don't, I don't think, the, I have the actual bottle, but this is their sample. I've never but, seen it. Um, it's around here. I can't find it, but so Andy, I had Andy Roddick on the show. He's a partner in it. Okay. With um, with um, Peyton, and 
the that's so that's the celebrity side of it, but the whiskey side of it is that they got a really good blender to help them. And um, it was Marianne Eves, who was the first um, female master distiller in Kentucky. And a really, really, really talented young woman who's now gone into the uh, consulting business. And she's uh she's good man this is this whiskey she blended here is is excellent it, if you like chocolate if you like toffee if you like hints of hazelnuts mm, um that sounds great it's gorgeous now Sweden's the investors Cove is a golf course that peyton manning and andy roddick are two of the celebrity principals of mm-hmm. it's in tennessee and i've heard about it and it looks really awesome the other well, owners of the whiskey are, in addition to Manning and Andy Roddick, Jim Nance and Nashville singer-songwriter Drew Holcomb. Mm-hmm. Hello, friends. Yeah, if you, uh, if you want to go, if you, you know, those guys are like, um, they've been, I think they're already out of their whiskey, but they're doing more <laughs> stuff. Oh, geez. And, um, you know, it, it's funny, like, they, they they launched in the middle of a pandemic, and they ran out by focusing on golf courses. I've never heard of a I've never heard of a like a, a spirits launch strategy 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 around golf courses. And why uh, not? Golfers, just, high end golfers like whiskey. That's what I, I, I can mean. Tell you that firsthand. It's, but you just don't hear people talking about that. Like from yeah. like, oh, yeah. our strategy is going to be golf courses and. But it's named after a golf course, and it's really, I mean, it, it kind of it hit a home run for them with that with right. that strategy. But uh, I can get you a bottle, Zabe, Paul, if you all want yes, one. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, would, yes, yes, please. yes, yes. At no cost to the league? Well, here's what I'm thinking, boys. Uh, everybody <laughs> on, Is this on my side. Is this on Steve doing this tonight? It's 8.35. We're two hours in. Right. I, I think we've I, already I, earned our I bottle. have never had a live stream go this long, by the way, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, well, you got two radio guys who love to hear right. their own voice. <laughs> and you don't have to pause for a commercial. And this right. is brought to you by Verizon Wireless over here or so-and-so's yeah. tire shop. But I was thinking, like, we can make this a reoccurring thing. I could send you guys samples or I could have whiskey sent to you. And yes, we, yeah, we and work on your palate. We develop every, it and talk sports. Yep, every Let's two months, it. something like that, six times yeah. a year. Is that sound about right? Whatever, whatever floats your boat, there, Zabe. Yeah, right. let's, uh, let's make it happen. Toronto six, Tampa Bay three right now. Uh, Cincinnati is hammering Detroit seven one, bottom seven. Uh, my daughter, as you probably heard earlier, has a dessert emergency that mm. needs to be addressed. It involves a chocolate bar, and I think you better get on that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. But, Fred, thanks for having us. This has been You're fun. We've loved it. George, you two are the man. I love the whiskey. Love the fellowship. I love the education. And I learned something new tonight. We learned how to love. We sure did. It took, All right, it I'm only took a few years. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, all right, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, That went a little longer than I thought. You know, I was not expecting that to go two hours. But it was a good time, right? Am I right? Like, that was uh, make sure you're following um, Charch and you're following Zabe. They have incredible shows of their own they have incredible podcasts i think uh i think we'll do a we'll do a call-in show this weekend in the members only community with my wife we have uh, we've been I, I sent a tweet out the other day about how much i really like canned cocktails and i started getting all these canned cocktails so i'm thinking that jacqueline and i will do like a canned cocktail taste off or something like that. And uh, so this weekend we'll have a nice members-only uh, live stream. 
So if you'd like to become a member, just click the join button right next to the subscription button. And it's a great time. We do a lot of live streams. We have they get they get information before anybody else. They see the videos before everybody else. And it's just a fun time. It's a good time. We hang out. You know, it's fun. A lot of fun. But more importantly, it's a community. And we chat every night as much as we can. And um, you know, it's in that community where we kind of like basically it was like COVID, fuck you. And um, we're kind of still there now. But uh, just appreciate you all tuning in tonight. If you're not a subscriber, you know, hit the subscribe button. Love to have you back. And I can't wait to uh, to do this again. And uh, it sounds like we got Zabe and Charge uh, scheduled for more to come. So if you like sports, if you like music, got a lot more coming. Cheers, everybody. Be safe out there. Do not lick handrails. Do not lick trash cans. And vodka, what is vodka? Vodka sucks. Cheers. <laughs>